Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. British authorities are continuing to investigate the suicide bombing in Manchester on Monday, the one that killed almost two dozen people. And nothing they have found so far will surprise you. Seven people have been arrested for possible involvement in that plot. Police are warning that bomber Salman Abadeh may simply have been the mule for a bomb built by someone else, and that person remains at large and could strike again. So that is one concern. But there are other facts in the case that ought to get policymakers thinking deeply about how and why this happened. And again, this will all seem familiar to you if you've watched any of these before. The bomber was born in Britain, not some far off land, but he still grew up to embrace Islamic radicalism and declare war on the country that raised him and kill his neighbors, in effect. There are many more like him. A new report released by the British government concludes there are about 3,500 people being watched as potential terrorists not a big country, at least 400 people who have returned to Britain after leaving to fight for ISIS, the very group that took responsibility for the Manchester bombing. So maybe there are lessons here, patterns that lawmakers need to consider as they respond, or we could go with the traditional choice, the one favored by our leaders, which is to add British flags to our Facebook profiles, pretend that terrorism somehow brings us together rather than drives us apart, and dismisses anyone who asks real questions as a bigot and a nativist so we can maintain the illusion that terror bombings are just an unavoidable fact of life in the big city. Which is the better option? Joining us now to help decide, Nigel Farage, he's the former leader of the UK Independence Party, UKIP, and Mark Stein, the famous author, columnist, and sometimes guest host for Rush Limbaugh. It's great to see you both. So Nigel, just a factual question Thank first. You. There are Brits who the authorities know have gone to fight for ISIS and they are walking free on your island. How can that be? I simply can't believe it, Tucker. I mean, for the last few years I've said that either we take away the passports of people we suspect um, of being linked to ISIS and stop them going, or perhaps better still, when they've been to Syria, on their attempt to return, we take their passports away and stop them coming back in. And the remarkable thing is that we know of 400 uh, that have been to fight in Syria that have returned, that we suspect the number maybe a thousand or more, and yet we've only taken action against 40. It is, you know, and I'm frankly sick to death of seeing prime ministers and leaders standing up after attacks saying how awfully sorry we are for everything when nothing is being done to counter the bad guys. So Mark Stein, if you're running a country and you know that people in your country have gone to fight with the most grotesque terror group ever created and you do nothing about it, you're really not trying to protect your population, are you? No, uh, I'm old-fashioned enough to believe in treason. You, you described uh, this uh, killer as British. Um, these 850 people, I think, uh, who are known to have gone off to fight in Syria and Iraq, uh, Nigel will know this better than I do, but for purposes of comparison, at the height of the IRA's campaign, MI5 estimated that there were no more than 100 active operatives. And that involved yeah. just basically going 20 miles down the road. These guys traveled halfway around the planet to fight for the Queen's enemies. That's the definition of treason. I don't know why they're walking around on the street. We're told that it would be very expensive to throw 850 people into prison. Uh, Germany estimates that for every one of these suspects they're tracking, they need 60 people tracking that guy. Uh, so it's a lot cheaper to toss them into prison uh, for going off and fighting for your enemies abroad uh, than it is to have 60 people monitoring them uh, and then doing nothing until 48 hours after they've blown up a bunch of people. But you've got to wonder, Nigel, if the government can't even punish people who are at war with it and with its population, then what is the point of having a government? Isn't that the most basic responsibility of a government? Well, the primary aim of any government should be to protect its citizens and the integrity of the nation. Um, I'm afraid this country is so hidebound by political correctness that we have allowed the mass sexual rape and abuse of thousands of underage girls in northern cities, and we've done nothing about it. We've allowed people uh, to go and be deeply radicalized, even brutalized in Syria, and done nothing about it, all because we're scared of being thought perhaps if we target one particular community, those of Islamic faith, we might be thought to be racist. And what is interesting is that our Prime Minister, Theresa May, 
was, of course, for six years the Home Secretary. She was the person in charge of all of this. And frankly, all I can say is she failed dismally in any attempts to stop radicalization from within or to stop bad people from outside coming into our country. And you know, Manchester was a shock. It was a new low. I mean, attacking young girls at a concert and people are upset, people are angry, but I think we now, even us, the slow to anger Brits, now need some action from our government. So, do, Mark, do you, I mean, do you agree with that? Do you think it's a matter of leaders who would literally rather see children die than be called bigoted? Yes, I think so. I was listening to the deputy mayor of Manchester today. I think it's Baroness Hughes. Nigel will uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But she, she yeah. was saying, we have to have the courage to call this what it is. And then she said, it's extremism. Well, extremism is a weaselly and evasive term. And then she said, we have to accept that uh, Muslim people are no more likely to commit these acts uh, than white people are. And that, in fact, is not the case. Not after Brussels not after Nice, not after the Berlin Christmas market, not after the murder of the, uh, the French pre priest, uh, Père Amel, uh, uh, last year. Uh, there is a particular problem. And as disgusting as what happened on Monday night is, was, equally concerning is the reaction of people like the Deputy Mayor and the Prime Minister and the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester, who are basically asking the citizens of the United Kingdom to live with the official lie where nothing uh, can be said that is actually approximates to the reality of the situation here. That's Soviet and totalitarian. They basically said this is an official lie. You know it's absurd. You know it doesn't match what you see. But this is it and you have to accept it. It's, it's, uh, it's wicked to do that. You're required to believe it. They want to control your mind, not just your behavior. Mm. Nigel, when you watch the American response, even the culture response yeah. to an event like what happened in your country on Monday. Are you surprised by how few of the lessons Americans are learning from this? Um, well, I'm not sure, actually. I think there is a, a sort of real optimism here. I spoke to Seb Gorka yesterday, who, of course, is dealing with counterterrorism with President Trump in the White House, and I think there is a new mood in the American government, uh, a desire to cast aside political correctness, a genuine desire to stop radicalization from happening. Uh, I mean, had Hillary won, I mean, look, she couldn't even bring herself to use the phrase Islamic <laughs> terrorism. Um, I think with Trump, uh, you have got somebody who has the moral courage to deal with this. And Tucker, can I say, I thought his speech in Riyadh to 50 of the world's biggest Muslim leaders when he said to them, drive out from your own places of worship those that spread extremism. So yeah. I think America is in a much better place than we are here. Though I have to say, you mentioned already there are 3,500 terrorist suspects living in the United Kingdom. Do you know in Belgium, with a population of 12 million, mm -hmm. there are 18,000 suspected terrorists. So, you know, uh, there are some countries even worse than us. I'm feeling better about America already. Nigel and Mark, thank you very much for that.